I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. A while back, I rebuilt a Stanley number 78. And then, just recently, I rebuilt a Craftsman number 79. It's actually a Sergeant number 79, sold by Craftsman. At least I'm going by the idea that it has Craftsman stamped on the blade. It's the only markings on the plane itself. While I was in the middle of doing the project, Chris asked me if I had a depth stop for the plane. I didn't have one on the Craftsman, but I do have one on this Stanley 78. The 78 came with the, all the bells and whistles on it when I bought it at the store. It wasn't in as, this nice a shape when I got it, but all the parts were there, which was the important thing. So after some cleanup, and I didn't even have to paint it, I had a good working plane. Now Chris is going to take this depth stop, he's going to use it as a pattern to make another one. Chris does that a lot. He's working on a post drill making ratchet wheels for it. This post drill is, was made by the Champion Blower and Forge Company, made in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. On the crank there's a cam. That moves the linkage arm and that in turn moves the pawl at the end. Now for purposes of demonstration I've stuck this quarter inch bolt in here just so I can give you an example of how it works. By adjusting this bolt for different lengths I can cause the ratchet to move more than one pawl. Now it's set to do just one, or it can do multiples, that's two, now we're doing three, and what that does determines how far the shaft advances and how much feed I put into the drill bit. When you're running a large diameter bit, having the ratchet advance just one tooth at a time has it do less speed so it's easier to crank. With this type of positive advance on the drill, you can punch through a really big hole. This little drill here, it's been road hard and put away wet a lot of times. It's dirty, it's, it's all gummed up. It's just as I found it. I haven't done a thing to it other than just pick it up and brought it home. It's been laying on the garage floor for, I don't know, years. The reason I brought this home was because the mechanism works perfectly. It's a little dirty and a little gummy, a little worn. It's missing this adjustment bolt. But other than that, the major components are here. The ratchet wheel, is all in good shape. The linkage is straight and all in one piece. The ratchet paw engages just like it's supposed to. The only problem this thing has is somebody wanted to put a longer crank on it so they made this crank. This is actually an old blank that they were going to use a, to make a horseshoe. You can see the holes punched into it right there. So this is quite old. With this linkage, by advancing the linkage out all the way, I can get a tremendous amount of leverage on that crank. Somebody wanted to drill big holes with this thing. But for general purposes and storage, I just shorten the crank up about as close as it can come. With this handle sticking up, this ratchet wheel has got a lot of stress on it. If, if it falls, it lands right on that ratchet wheel and snaps right off. And without the ratchet wheel, this really doesn't work very well. This is the post drill that I have in the shop that I actually use was made by the Silver Manufacturing Company. Out of this drill press operates exactly the same as the Champion. 
it's in a little better shape, I cleaned it up and, and I keep it oiled so it operates smoothly. It has a cam on the bowl gear that operates a linkage that moves the ratchet paw and moves the ratchet wheel. It doesn't have the adjustable advance on the, the ratchet paw though. It only moves one tooth at a time, but it operates really well. When I was moving from the old shop over to here, this was sitting on the back of the truck. I didn't have it tied down, my fault. It fell out of the back of the truck as I was turning out of a driveway. It landed on that wheel and snapped the wheel and busted all the spokes out of it. I was able to braze it back together again, but it didn't come out exactly perfect. I got it to work fairly good as far as run out on the diameter, but I wasn't able to have the shaft exactly straight in it. It should spin straight and true like this one. But the purpose of the flywheel is to add momentum to the operation and smooth out the travel of the spindle so it operates very well. Chris made a new ratchet wheel. He took the original, made it into a pattern, had it cast, machined out the new one. I'll put a link to the video in the description. If you want to reach Chris, you can contact him at oldironshops.com or on his YouTube channel, Chris Anderson. So now that I've taken this off, I'm going to label the envelope and get it sent off to Chris so he can make another one of these. I want to have him make more than one. I need two myself. Thanks a lot, Chris. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.